James, now notice this, James chapter one, verse 22 says this. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. The word doers here is number 46, or I'm sorry, number 4163. It is the Greek word poietes. And it means a performer, a person who is performing a thing. Now, it's the same word we get the word poet from. But a poet back in those days was a person who gave a word or a song or something like that and then acted it out as they sang it. So it was a person who not only said it, but also did it and they acted it out. And now, so now notice, to be a doer, you have to perform the word that you've heard. And it says here that you're to be a doer of the word. Now the word there, now get this, this is the main point and we're done after this, I, I would guess. <clears throat> but the word there, it says, be doers of the word, not hearers only. The word word is number 3056. It's the Greek word logos. It's not the word rhema. If you're familiar with the rhema logos uh, doctrine, he says, be doers, performers of the logos. This would have been a great opportunity for him to say, be doers of the rhema. But he didn't. He said, be doers of the logos. Now, we have proven before, and we don't have time to go into it today. If you've been to the DHT, you can see it. But the word of God, rightly divided and understood. In other words, the concept of a particular aspect of the word of God. The complete concept of a thing is the logos. In other words, if you have a good understanding of the doctrine of laying on of hands to heal the sick, then you have the logos of that, okay? Anything, if you understand the true heart and the overall idea of giving, then you have the logos of giving. Now, if you just know a scripture, that's not it. It is whenever you understand, when you have the, the general concept. But notice, the word rhema, and I, I challenge you, do, this, do some homework. Go home and study these things out. Look in your concordance, look up the word word, and find these two words. The first one is number 3056, logos, and the other is number 4487, which is the word rhema. And when you look up the word rhema, you will see every time the word rhema is used, it is always used in connection with a logos that is acted upon. Rhema is the logos you do. It's that simple. Logos becomes rhema when you do it. Just like food becomes energy once you eat it. You can sit and look at food on your plate all day long and starve to death. But if you take that food and you eat it, your body breaks it down and turns it into energy. Logos is turned into rhema when you act on logos. People have tried and done a pretty good job of trying to convince people to do nothing until they get a rhema word. It will never happen that way. Why? Because you have to act on it for it to become real to you. Rhema is when it becomes real to you. See, laying hands on the sick for them to recover is a law to me. I mean, it is, it's, there's no way you cannot convince me it's not true, that it's not right. You can't do it. Why? Because I've done it. Why? That logos of lay hands on the sick and they shall recover is not logos to me. It was logos when I saw it. I did it. Now it's rhema. Why? Because it is word that I've acted upon. It's a law. It's the way it is. And there is no way and no devil in hell could ever convince me that it's not true. Why? Because it's not a theory to me. It's reality. Right? And so logos becomes reality whenever you act upon it. Logos becomes the rhema word, a law to you of how you're to live. The Bible says man does not live by every by bread alone, but by every word, rhema, that proceeds out of the mouth of God. People say, see right there, we're only supposed to do that. No, no, no. <clears throat> you don't live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Very few people ever have, actually. It's like saying you obey every law written. But see, you live by the law that you obey. If you don't obey it, you're not living by that law. Does that make sense? So it's the same thing. You, we don't live by bread alone, but by the word of God, what? 
not just the word of God that's out there, but by the word of God that we live by. When you say, well, I, man, I live by that. What does that mean? It means you do it. If you don't do it, you don't live by it. So if you're going to live by rhema, that means that you are, the word you live by is the word, it's the logos you do. Does this make sense? You've got to get a hold of this. Because this, again, this goes back, believe it or not, a lot of this goes back to the idea or to the situation I had on the Facebook thing that I was talking about when we started. Why? Because they brought up this stuff about how we're supposed to wait and be led and we have to have a word and we have to do these kinds of things. And I'm like, no. You read it. You believe it. You go do it. And then it becomes a law to you. And then you live by it. And then whenever you got that down, then you grab another one and you meditate on it and you talk about it and you think about it and you do it and you put it into practice. And whenever you get an idea, and it's amazing because whenever you start putting these things together, all the scriptures fit together and your life changes. And by these precious promises, you become a partaker of his divine nature so that whenever you go out in public and you see a person that's sick, his divine nature says, well, of course, we're going to lay hands. Of course, why? Because this is a law. Of course, this works. Now, this isn't my religion. This is reality. Right. This, this is what actually happens. Here's what's going to happen. And it's, what's amazing uh, to me, actually, is when I go out and I start to pray for somebody out in public, I have, I've done it. When I first started, I was a little hesitant, and I had more rejections. I had more people say no. That was when I first started. As I saw it more real, and I saw that it was reality, I got bolder in it. And instead of going, I pray for people, and uh, you know, um, maybe, you know God, God heals them. That didn't how I said. I'm like, now I welcome. Hey, let me show you something cool. Watch this. And I take him by the hand and say, that leg, watch that right now in Jesus' name. Leg, be healed. There's, there's no hesitation. Why? Because there's no guess. This is real. This is life. This isn't, well, let's, let's, try, let's just pray and see what the Lord will do. Well, he's going to do one of two things. He's going to do what he said or he's going to do nothing. How many of you know he, de- he never does nothing? He always performs his word. Amen. And so whenever you get, that's why I said Paul and Barthes, they wax bold speaking the word of God. See, whenever you start doing the word of God, you'll wax bold. You'll start to speak up and start, everybody goes, well, can, can you get me activated? You don't need activation. You need to become obedient. I don't need to activate you. Holy Spirit did that when he moved into you. You were on active duty from that moment on. You just been AWOL. And now it's time to get obedient and do what you're supposed to do. 